The prelude, alternatively titled Growth of a Poet's Mind, an autobiographical poem, is an 1850 extended blank verse poem by William Wordsworth, a summary of his formative years and development as a writer. It was initially intended to precede his more philosophical work, The Recluse, a project that was never finished. Though he never named it himself, Wordsworth once referred to the poem in a letter as the poem on the growth of my own mind. It went unpublished until several months after his death in 1850, thereafter, his wife, Mary Wordsworth, gave it its title. The poem is widely considered Wordsworth's greatest, and instrumental to early figurations of modernity in its focus on the epistemology of the self, that is, the question of what the self can know and do. The poem initially sets out to explain how Wordsworth's mind expanded over time until he identified as, and claimed the title of, poet. Wordsworth examines his childhood, celebrating his many early opportunities to express himself. He contrasts these experiences with his present frustration and strife. He explains that he has always inherently been a poet, but might not have ever understood his vocation if he had not constantly reflected on past experiences. He summarizes his early memories of Northern England's Lake District, as well as the emotional associations he formed between it and the progression of the Four Seasons. He likens himself to the flora of his childhood home, since he also originated as a figurative a seed, constrained and enriched by his developmental environment. In the second section of the poem, Wordsworth recalls his mother's death and his process of grieving. He names her death as partially responsible for his deep fear of being alienated from society. Once she died, he found solace in nature, which became his maternal substitute greatly deepening and enriching his inner life as he explored and bonded to its many mysteries. He did so until he came of age and enrolled at the University of Cambridge. His isolation from his home, and from a natural environment in general, was like the death of his second mother. The next part of the poem focuses on Wordsworth's experiences at Cambridge. At first, he was lost in the noises and pitfalls of his early self-sufficient life. Over time, however, the academic exposure broadened Wordsworth's imagination and sharpened his intellectual side. He came to love urban life in its own right, yet used his summer vacations to return to the place of his youth. After a trip during which Wordsworth hiked through the French Alps, he concluded that the imagination exists and can be nourished, independently of the natural world. He saw the natural world as one of many great, beautiful places for creative work. After graduating from Cambridge, Wordsworth moved briefly to London, then to France. He met and was influenced by the French patriot Michel Bopuy, who taught him to care about political revolution. Yet, Wordsworth faced the imminent threat that would become known as the French Revolutionary Wars and took refuge in London. Thereafter, he worried greatly about France's future and experienced a crisis of faith about the stability of nations and the possibility of non-violent revolution. Towards the end of the poem, Wordsworth returns to where he began. He finds his way to the Lake District, where he was first enamored of the complexity and beauty of nature. Suspecting that he could feed his imagination by recovering specific moments from childhood. His search triggered a series of powerful flashbacks to his early childhood. The trip home restored his belief in the intrinsic value of life, something that he understood to be accessible only through the imagination, yet impossible to destroy. He terms these physical sites of memory spots of time and suggests that they are key to restoring the imagination. He celebrates the infinite value of nature and the calmness and freedom of childhood, a feeling that one can obtain even in old age. Finally, Wordsworth hones in on several of his own spots of time. One of these is his ascent of the highest mountain in Wales, Mount Snowdon. Upon reaching the summit, Wordsworth gazed at the fog encroaching on all sides of the lower mountain and developed an analogy between light and the imagination. Both are penetrative forces that eliminate confusion and allow one to apprehend the interesting objects in the world. He ends his work giving thanks to his sister, Dorothy, and to his friendship with Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the esteemed poet who reportedly convinced him to write his autobiographical poem. He holds that these two individuals made the poem possible by pushing him to believe in himself. A highly reflective poem, the prelude continually returns to the same sites of Wordsworth's memory, showing how they are essential to the construction of selfhood. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.